Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Finishing Consultants webinar on how to manage two catalysts and ten colors using the Promix 2KS. I'm Eric Ranica. I'll be your host today. Presenter hey, again. Can Bill join the conference. Finishing Consultants. Bill has over 40 years in the finishing. Can join the conference. We have Mike Mall also on hand with his 20 years of experience working for Graco in the demo lab and doing a ton of training on all these products. So we have a lot of experience. So we're going to just start with a little bit of housekeeping. We have the phones muted, but we still welcome your questions. So there's two ways you can get questions into us. You should see a chat function on your right side, and you can just type a, type a question in the chat. There's also a Q&A. You can type it in there. So either way will work. Uh, the other thing we want to cover is that we're going to be doing a live demo, and you may want to put your the, the video camera in full screen. Anytime you want to do that, you just hover your mouse over the video screen. Up in the upper right-hand corner, there's a little icon with two arrows. Click on that. Your video will go into full screen mode. You'll be able to see it better. I'll remind you of that when we go into the demo. When you want to go back and just see the uh, presentation in full screen, just hit the escape key. So hopefully that will make it a little easier for you to follow what's going on today. So I'm going to turn it over to our, our panel, guys. What do you have for us today? Okay, good morning. I thought we'd start this morning real quick with just a quick review of what we talked about in the first two webinars, uh, why we're using plural component materials, things like improved durability, better chemical resistance, increased flexibility, lower VOCs, less energy required to cure them, and some, in a lot of cases, quicker cure times. Uh, and along with that, then you find that there's some challenges when you use plural component materials. Off ratio, not mixed correctly. Uh, we're not ran out of pot life, so you end up having to do rework or increase scrap, things like that. Um, the other, the other issue is when you hot pot it or mix it ahead of time is the pot life or the usable life of the material. Um, if you don't have, an, if you mix up a pot and you don't have as much material coming down your line as you thought, you can run out of that usable pot life and increase your waste. So to address that, we use technology today. If you look at this slide on the bottom, it shows the, the, the basic manual, just a bucket and a stick. As we go up this pyramid, the price goes up, of course, because we're using more technology, but the performance also goes up. The next step up is mechanical proportioning, which is simply just a machine that has two cylinders normally that are hooked together and stay on ratio, very limited in what it can do for you. Uh, then we go to mechanical with online reporting, or not reporting, but uh, assurance. That way, if it goes off ratio, if you run out of A, and you still continue to pump B, it will alarm and tell you or stop the machine. And at the very top of the list, then we have electronic proportions, which we're talking about today. Uh, they are the, the most accurate, the, the most reliable, uh, much easier to use in most cases. And then we talked about the 2 kV. Mike, you want to cover that? Yeah, sure. So uh, in the last presentation that we did, uh, we started with the uh, 2KE, uh, and we talked about uh, the applications it works in and why. Um, this is a meter or a pump-based system, and it's our entry-level system. Uh, most applications for the meter-based system, we can do three colors and one single catalyst. Uh, pump-based system is typically dedicated to one color because it's not efficient to flush out a pump system. Uh, but both of these proportioners are good for all different spray technologies, from air spray to air-assisted airless and, and airless as well. Okay. Um, in addition, uh, there's a all stainless steel fluid pads, so it gives a, a great broad band of, of material compatibility uh, for materials such as waterborne, solvent borns, and even acid catalyst uh, materials. Uh, in addition, we can manage up to two guns on the 2KE, or we can have a, a gun flush box. Okay, so that's the uh, unit that we covered last time we spoke. And Today, I guess uh, we're going to be covering the 2KS, but before we get into that, I think we're going to have a polling question. Give me a moment to pull that up. So we're going to open the poll. Oops, I the right one here. Poll, and you should see a polling question. Awesome. Okay, so we got the polling question up there, and basically what we're asking is if you're currently using plural component equipment, uh, be it Yes Graco, 
yes, not Graco, uh, or no, you're not using it at all. So we'll give a couple of seconds here for people to go ahead and enter their answer into this, and then we'll do a quick check. Yeah, seeing a few answers coming in. Still coming in. People probably still. Okay, we'll give just a couple more seconds. about it for a second, so just we'll give you a few more here. All right, I think, yeah, we can go ahead and close that down, Eric. Okay, I want to share the poll results. Looks like we're... I think I still have a timer on here. So what I'm seeing is 31% of the people do not use plural component equipment. And we're equally divided with uh, between, yes, they use Graco, Okay. And no, and yes, they use something other than Graco. Sounds good. So it sounds like about 30% of the audience uh, does not currently use plural component or electronic proportion equipment. So uh, with that, we'll go ahead and move into the, the next slide. Um, and the next slide is really going to just kind of go over the, the, the broad configuration of the 2KS family. All right. So basically what we have is we have a system um, platform now. Uh, where in the 2KE we had uh, specific um, products, now we have a platform that can grow as operations grow. In other words, we have a standard platform and we can make it into a manual wall panel or an automatic wall panel, and we'll go into more depth in that in a minute. Or we can even move to an automated system for robotic applications or even move into 3K materials. In addition to that, we can configure the 2KS to be a solvent born, to be a water born, to be an acid-based system. So it's really a platform product line that can be configured to meet many different operations. Next slide, please. And we're going to talk about the wall panel now, the actual wall panel itself. Now, it's all the wall panel is con controlled on the manual system, on the manual wall panel. By the, by the controller with interfacing with what we call the easy key uh, board. He starts it, he programs the, uh, the recipes, picks the recipes, the whole bit. Um, the trigger is, the gun trigger is manual in most cases. It is, or the remote operator station, he can from inside, sorry, from inside the booth, he can actually take and select the color in the, or the flush mode and so forth from inside without having to go in and out of the booth. So it makes it much, much easier. Uh, the manual wall panel can handle two guns and two flush boxes, so we increase the, the user output. Both operators are using the same material, of course. Okay, automatic wall panel? Yes, yeah, so on the automatic wall panel, um, oh. it's quite similar um, uh, other than instead of the operator inputting from the booth control, now the uh, inputs have to come from a PLC or a robot, so the command now comes from somewhere else other than the booth control. Okay. So it's semi-automatic also? Yeah, yeah. so semi-automatic basically gives you the ability to have uh, an automated system with an automatic gun on a robot being controlled by a PLC, but it also gives you the ability to have a, a manual system for a touch-up. So it'll accept both automatic and manual. The caveat there being you can cannot use flow control when using semi-automatic. Okay. Okay. And then the other uh, platform that we have is going to be the automatic RoboMix panel. And the RoboMix panel just basically takes the fluid panel of, of the wall system and shrinks it down to a smaller size so it can be mounted right on the right. arm of the robot. And basically what that does is it puts the mixing point closer to the robot, which is going to give you less waste um, and less time for color change. Uh, now because we shrunk it down to a smaller size, uh, we actually lose some pressure rating on it. So we can only go to 250 PSI, so low pressure only for the automatic RoboMix panel. Okay. Next and polling question. I think it took us right to another polling question, didn't it? All right. So here we'll open a poll. So in this poll, is, is uh, we, we want, we're curious is if you're currently using automation in your painting process. Uh, and obviously the uh, the inputs we're looking for is yes, no, or not yet, but looking at it or planning to move towards automation like we're seeing in, in many industries right now. We've got a few more questions on the poll. Yeah, 
I will give it just a couple more seconds here. Sharing the results, yep. Eric? Good. So it looks like 31% uh, say no. Okay, so we have a large percentage, again, about 30% the same that aren't using electronic proportioners that are not using automation in their uh, process right now. Yeah, and then a small number that are not yet, and uh, quite a few not giving an answer. Maybe they're still thinking about it. All right. All right, so. All right, so what we're going to do now is we'll move on and we'll take a closer look at uh, the wall panel, if you wouldn't mind, Bill. Sure. So the first thing to understand is that the uh, wall panel itself is intrinsically safe. We can mount that inside the booth, inside a hazardous area, so we can go in your paint kitchen. We can put it in the booth, like I said, or if you have a man lift, we can mount it a man lift and run the supply hoses to it. That way you have shorter hoses and less waste. Uh, broad pressure capabilities. We have low pressure systems up to about 300 PSI. You have air spray or air, air assisted, air assisted yep. airless, which would give you about uh, up to about 3,000 psi or some airless. And then for a single color application, we can go to 4,000 psi for some of your heavier materials, harder to, to atomize. Uh, we can, like we said earlier, we can we can actually use two guns with this panel as well as two gun flush boxes, which automates the the flushing process and the loading process for more accuracy. And as long as we're on that, that's one of the differentiators between the 2KS and the 2KE is the ability to have two guns and two gun flush boxes. Yeah. Correct. Uh, they have what they call a stretched vertical design, so that all the components are easy to get to and for maintenance and for serviceability. And on the RoboMix panel. So the RoboMix panel, again, uh, it, we shrunk it down in size so it could go on the um, robot arm. So you can see uh, on the dimensions there the size of it. I, I think the big takeaway here is that the pressure, again, is limited to 250 PSI, so for low pressure applications, which is typically what we see in automated systems anyways. Um, and the idea, once again, make that, that mixed material line much shorter, keep the mixing point closer to the, to the applicator. Okay. All right, uh, next slide, we're going to take a little closer look at the fluid manifold, and, and this is where the magic happens, if you want to call it that. Uh, this is where the base and the catalyst come together. Uh, it's very compact design. Uh, the idea is to keep the mixed material to its lowest volume to decrease uh, waste during color changes and, and flushing procedures. Uh, the porting in this manifold is very streamlined. If you look at the bottom right-hand picture, on the right-hand side of that picture, that's the solvent valve. And you can see the porting to that solvent valve is directly at the face of the dosing valve for the material. What this does is it allows for a really clean and efficient flushing when you're moving from one color to the other. Um, and then the last one there, the versatile uh, integration chamber, and, and really what that means is you can take that chamber and you can point it up for most applications or you can point it directly down uh, if you're moving towards the dynamic dosing, uh, which we're going to cover in a little bit through an animation. But it does, this fluid manifold does allow you to go from one style of integration to the other by simply flipping it over. Okay. And then this machine also gives you a couple of different dosing options. The standard the way it comes set up most usually is with the uh, sequential dosing. So we, we inject the A side or the resin side of the, into the integrator, and then we add, and it just stops. We open the valve and add the catalyst in the integrator. Uh, on the integrators themselves, the, the dose sizes, depending on your, your ratio and your flow rate requirements, we can change that integrator to different sizes so that we can match your, the, uh, the ratio, your flow rate, as well as reduce the amount of uh, waste that we have and that we use in there. Um, there's also the dynamic dosing, which for heavy materials, all the waterborne materials, we, we run the A side continuously and then just open the B side and inject it directly into the stream. And then I think it's it's uh, worth noting that as a standard, um, you can it comes as a 50 cc integrator, but you can change over to a larger, smaller size, or dynamic. All right, so we're going to go to the next uh, slide here and take a look at an animation um, of sequential dosing. And again, this is kind of our go-to or our standard. Uh, and as Bill mentioned, basically we open a valve and we flood the integrator with base material. And then we shut that valve down and open the catalyst valve. 
and we integrate that catalyst into the base that's in the integrator. The idea here is we're running one material at a time, um, so we don't ever have to try and chase one material after the other. We monitor one, then we dispense the next. If for some reason we under or over dispense, we can compensate on the next dispense, maintaining our ratio standard, typically less than 1%, okay? All right, and then uh, on the next one, which is going to be the dynamic dosing, and again, as Bill mentioned, this is where we have uh, one material, typically the base or the resin, running all the time, and as we're monitoring the flow of that material using the gear meters, uh, we're going to dynamically open and close that catalyst valve, injecting the catalyst into the stream of material. Uh, typically, uh, we use dynamic dosing in, as you mentioned, difficult or, or hard to mix materials, uh, such as potentially cart based materials or, or waterborne materials. Those materials that uh, mix quite difficultly are, are hard. Okay? We can change both the colors and the catalyst on this, so as long as your, com your materials are compatible, so like you have a, a uh, polyurethane primer as well as polyurethane top coats. They may use different catalysts, but we can, we can change that catalyst along with the resin. We can go up to 30 different colors with the module and up to four different catalysts. They each can use your own... Uh, Chris Schwab has joined the conference. Finish your thought. I got a question that we need to probably address. Okay. So, go ahead, finish your thought. So, we can, like I say, we, we can do 30 colors, four different catalysts, and you can use a separate uh, solvent for each. Yep. Um, uh, yeah, so the, it's easy to add to. Is also, yeah. So you can start with four colors. If you have to add more colors, we can add more modules to that. So I mean, you don't have to get 30 colors right off the bat. You can start with two, and we can add two later or four later. What it, it's modular and very, very modular in design. Then again, that's one of the differentiators between the 2KE and the 2KS is its ability to go to 30 colors as opposed to only three colors. Correct. And Eric, I think you said we had a yeah, question. Yeah, there's a question that just came in about the sequential dosing. I yeah. didn't want to let this go too long because the question is, so the sequential dosing does not use flow meters? Is that true or false? Oh, good question. Uh, yeah, so the question is, is does sequential or does sequential or dynamic? He said sequential dosing. Okay, yeah, so sequential dosing and dynamic dosing both use flow meters on the 2KS system. Uh, we use the same meters. Uh, we simply um, manage the, the valves or the dosing valves in a different way, but the meters are still used. Right. Yep. Oh, thanks, guys. Right, next slide. Okay, next slide is a color change. Um, and basically what this animation is going to do is it's going to show you what happens during a color change uh, during a 2KS. Um, in the 2KE system that we looked at last month, you basically flushed from from one color to the other color all the way through the gun. With the 2KS, we have both the pre-mix flush and the mixed material flush. As you'll notice in the animation, um, we're actually flushing one color through a new valve called a dump valve, and then while that's going on, we're flushing with the two valves that you mentioned, the air and the solvent right. valve, the mixed material out to the gun. All right, so what this does is this allows us to take two functions, the color change and the flushing of the mixed material and do it at the same time, right? So what we're doing is we're decreasing the amount of time it takes to go from one color to the other color, just giving us greater control. Number one, greater control over the time and also giving us greater control over the amount of solvent that we use for flushing and color changing because we have the air purge valve as well. Okay, so one of the other really nice features about the, the 2KS is that it's adaptable. If you're running a three-component material, we can add a module to this system and we can take that mixed material and we can go through and add a reducer to it. Or if you want to reduce the resin first and then the catalyst, we can do that. So it's very, very adaptable to whatever your 3K requirements are. Uh, there again, with, with the recipes you can use, if it's temperature sensitive, you can have a different re recipe for the same material at different temperature ratings so that you can get the, the correct viscosity out of the gun. But it's a plug-in module, very easy to, to add to any time, and it's very, very accurate, very easy to use. Specific, especially if you're using cork or reclaimed material. Yeah. 
That's really what it's really good at. All right, on to the next slide. Uh, basically, a, a look at the Easy Key interface, and this is really where um, the operator is going to set up. Not, maybe not even the operator or the painter, but when you install it, this is where you're going to go in and set up the system, configure it, and actually program the recipes. We're going to take a closer look at this in a couple minutes when we do the live uh, webinar, but the Easy Key interface is where we do all the setups. So as we mentioned earlier, there's a remote control panel that's intrinsically safe that can actually go into the booth for the operator to use. Very, very intuitive, very easy to use. There's a stop button, there's an up and down arrow for choosing the, uh, the recipes, an enter arrow for, for getting it to start the, 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 uh, the recipe. There's a flush button, standby button, so if he's going to go to lunch, he simply hits the standby button and the flush button, it'll flush the mixed material out of the system. But leave the unmixed material in the system so it loads much faster. You don't have to worry about your uh, pot light. There's also a pot light timer on this system that will, if you're using a gun flush box, will automatically flush that system if you hit up against the uh, pot light timer. So I think it's important to mention that this would be the interface that the painter has to work right. with and not the easy key. So this is right. a, a much simpler thing for the uh, operator to have to work with. Yeah, usually I tell people that the easy key itself is where we tell it how to do something and the remote panels we tell it what to do. Good. Okay, so the machine comes with, with the standard gear meter, the G3000 gear meter, which gives us a uh, 3000 PSI capability and different flow rates. We, there's two different. There's a high resolution meter and a standard meter. The only difference being is the flow rates are different. One goes to about a half, the high resolution is good to about a half a gallon a minute, and the standard is good to about a gallon a minute. There's many other meters we can use or systems we can use. So you have uh, low pressure meters. We also have helical gear meters for very hard or shear sensitive materials. And if you have really light materials or you have fibered materials, metallic, something like that, we can go to a mass flow meter, Coriolis meter, and measure very accurately with, with that. There's also a meter for, if you're keeping track of your solvent use, there's a solvent meter that we can add to the system. It's specifically designed to be used with solvents. It's, it's geared that way so that we don't have any uh, bypass with the solvents or making it much more accurate. And I think we can move on to, uh, we missed one slide there. Yeah, there you go, Eric. That's the, uh, that's okay. That's a solvent meter. Yeah, that's a go. solvent meter. Uh, one of the things that we like to uh, comment on, on the solvent meter is it should be used only for solvent or solvent-like materials. Correct, correct. All right, and then the, the last thing on the presentation part of this today is about the gun flush box. We talked about that uh, briefly, the fact that the 2KS can actually manage two gun flush boxes, again, a differentiator from the 2KE. But really what it does is it, it's, it eliminates manual triggering. It, it, it takes uh, the uh, onus of proper flushing and color changing out of the operator's hand. So you put the gun in the gun flush box, you tell the system to go to color change or purge using the booth control, and everything's managed um, automatically from the gun flush box. Uh, from a safety perspective, when using electrostatics, uh, it's extremely nice because it shuts or it kills the atomizing air off, which also kills the turbine air so it eliminates the potential yeah. for electrostatics being turned on during a purge sequence. Okay. And I think that takes us to another polling question, Eric. Is that correct? Looks like it. So the next polling question should be uh, It is, and I think it's uh, how are you tracking material usage? Um, we uh, have just a couple more slides on, on how we can track and differentiate uh, 2KE from the 2KS we're talking about today. So what we're looking for is currently uh, you're not tracking, you're doing it manually, manually meaning a, a pen and paper, right? Yeah, writing it down. And then um, using e uh, proportioning equipment or data from a proportioner or using some other form of automatic tracking. Okay, still waiting for the participants to put in their responses. I'll we'll give it just a couple more seconds here before we shut it down. Here. Five more seconds. And I'll show, I'm showing the results. It looks like we got about 13% are currently not tracking, 6% are manual, 6% are using a, a, a proportioner. Okay. So a great
great majority, though, are not. Great majority, but 13% uh, is not bad for not tracking. I think uh, we've seen a, a lot of improvement over the years in people needing to track material and using proportioning equipment to track material is quite simple. Uh, we have a couple of different ways to do it, right. Bill, and if you would take us to the so first one. The first way we call it the basic web interface. On, on this unit, you actually plug it into your computer with the cable it's supplied or into your network, basic. Uh, and you can get basic information from that. It allows you to download uh, usage logs, alarm logs, things like that uh, from the machine itself. So I want to clarify this one. Um, on the basic web interface, this is not the one that can go into the network. This is right. booth site only. Right, okay. Correct. Yep. And then we've yeah, got the advanced web interface. Yeah, so what we're looking at now is, is the logs that you can retrieve using the basic web uh, downloads, right. right? So on the left you see the uh, the log alarm, which anytime there's a, the, the machine alarms uh, over for, you know, off ratio or whatever, it tells you so we have a log of what happens. So when you do maintenance, you, you can see where the issues might be or what the, what the operator is doing. The one on the right then is, is the job log, and we record the material by job number, and we'll show you how that's recorded up there. But it gives you the, the A usage, the B usage, and the total of C in the total. So and the, uh, the job logs are, are resettable. The totalizer, the total for the machine is not. And the benefit there for the customer is they can track by job how much paint they're using or if there's any job costing, potential problems. And also then your VOC reporting is much easier. All right, so a minute ago you mentioned being able to connect to the network for um, interface, and that would be the advanced web interface. Uh, it's worth mentioning that the basic web interface comes standard with every unit, and the advanced would be the add-on or the accessory. And basically the advanced web gives you the ability to network systems together and add them to your network within your manufacturing. Um, one of the benefits for that, and Eric, I could ask you to go to the next slide, um, would be that if you add it to the network, you can now do some remote monitoring uh, and not controlling, but programming of your 2KS system. In other words, I can monitor what's going on in my paint booth from a remote location, or I can even go in and I can change some profiles or some, some, um, some recipes. I can't actually run the unit remotely. I can just go ahead and set it up and program it. So basically anything you can do from the easy key, which we're going to demonstrate in a minute here, you can also do remotely with the advanced web interface. Now I think we're on to uh, one more polling question about industry, and we're looking for what kind of industry uh, do you currently work in? Uh, wood, general metal, automotive, agricultural, or aerospace? And then after this poll, I think we're going to take a look at an application, a success story, before we move into our live demo. Okay, questions and answers are coming in. Two people have gotten their answer in. Got a few. Say about 14% are in wood, 7% in general metal, 14% in aerospace. Yeah. Okay. And that's I think what we would expect to see um, from from that territory. Right. Yeah. Good. And then Bill, if you'd walk us through the uh, this application success story, that'd be awesome. Yeah, we have a Northwest trailer manufacturer that has taken and replaced their hot potting operation where they were using one gallon kits several of them painting their trailers, and they put in a complete system which included a 2KE for the primer, but then a 2KS uh, for their top coats, and they were all polyurethanes with a with common catalyst. And we use, a, it's a four color system. They have three standard colors they use, and then they also have a pump on the side that they can do uh, easy flush and do uh, custom color. So there's, there's a recipe for that. The benefits for the customer were it allowed them to buy a lot of materials in bulk. You can buy it in drums now and, and pump it over instead of just the one gallon kits and hot potting it. Reduced paint and solvent waste because of this, the way we flushed the, the unit. Uh, improved paint process and quality. It, much more control over how it's mixed, when it's mixed, and how long the pot life is than, than it is when it's hot potting. And improved employee health and safety because they're not standing over the pots stirring the stuff or spilling the, the solvents and so forth. So it's worked out really, really well for them. Good. 
All right, and then um, so we went through the presentation fairly quickly this morning, uh, covering the highlights. Uh, just want to make create some awareness that there is a lot of uh, additional information available for your customers um, on our website and on your website as well. Uh, but product videos, uh, brochures, product selection tools that help people understand um, what the appropriate proportion for their application may, may be. Um, and there's also, we talked a little bit about the advanced web interface. We actually have a simulator that's available that you can download from our website. And it'll give, it's, it's, it's a simulator, but it gives you the ability to walk through the benefits of the advanced web interface. Uh, and then, a, of course, all of our product manuals out there as well. So a, a ton of information yes. available to people uh, through our website. Okay, and then with that, I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and move the camera over, and we're going to do a, a quick uh, product demo so everyone can see what the 2KS looks like. Okay, guys, if you want to see this a little clearer, go into full screen mode. So just hover with your mouse over the, the, uh, um, the video pod. You'll see an icon with the two arrows. Click on that, you'll get full screen. I think you'll be able to see, see it a little better. Okay, so I think once we're there, we're going to start with the component ID. Um, and I just want to kind of briefly go over all the stuff that we talked about uh, through the presentation. Starting at the top here, um, this is going to be the easy key again. Uh, this can go right, uh, this, this whole unit can go right inside the paint booth other than the easy key. You want this outside the paint booth. This is, we, would be where you would go in and program and set up um, all the recipes in the configuration. And we'll, we'll go through that a little bit deeper in a minute. Over here next to Bill, that's the booth control. Uh, that's the unit that the operator is going to interface with, and we'll show you how easy that is in a minute as well. The fluid panel down in the cent center here, um, we, we called out the stretch vertical design, and I'd like to pay just a little bit of more time to that because what we talk about on that is the ability to move everything up where it's real easy to access. Uh, the benefit here is you can get to all the, the, the valving, you can get to the main board where all the troubleshooting can be done because of the lighting on the board for trying to diagnose uh, problems. So instead of being tucked in behind everything, it's up and top and, and real easy to get to. Okay? All right, the other things I want to call out is the color change valves. We have some on each side. Again, this is, would be the base side. This would be the uh, catalyst side. These are low pressure valves. Uh, again, to call out numbers, we can have up to 30 colors here and four catalysts. As we move from the color change valves, we go into the gear meters. The gear meters are the items that are monitoring the flow. And then after the gear meters, we go down into the fluid manifold. The fluid manifold have the dosing valves, the flushing valves, the integrator body, and then some other valving here used for meter calibration and dispenses. After that, we come out of the mix, static mixer and go off to the gun. Okay? Um, this is a two-gun system. Uh, we have a gun flush box on both sides. For the demo today, I think we're just going to use one of the gun flush boxes, but uh, um, that's a, a quick breakdown on the components. So I think what we'd like to do now is we'll reset the camera, and Bill, if you could kind of walk us through the booth control and the functions of the booth control, that'd be Okay, so this, like, like I said, this is the booth control here. Now it's inside the booth. It's intrinsically safe. So if you come in, we can scroll up or down and pick the, uh, the recipe you want to use. You hit the enter button, it, it starts the process. We can go into standby mode at any time, and it just stops. We can put it in spray mode. Once you load the recipe and it's loaded the gum and you get ready to go, you just hit the spray mode. You can. Uh, this is your job record. We'll talk about that in a minute. But if you finish a job or a specific part of the job, you want to record that. But how much material to use there? We, we can do that here. We can advance the job log here. And like I say, this is your flush system for um, lunch breaks, something like that. If you have a short pot life and you want to flush the unit out, um, we'll talk about recipes in a minute. But there's always a recipe zero, which is your like end of day flush. That's that's your controller here. Then on the um, Basic information, we'll go ahead and move over here to the easy key. 
This is your main screen that you're looking at now. This is the one the operator sees most often. And when we load the material here in a minute, you'll see that it actually has a, an animation that shows you which valve is in operation. From, from that screen, you can go to the, uh, this is the alarm log. And this is the one that downloads when you download the information with the basic web interface. So that tells you all the, all the different errors you have. And the next one, and it, several pages, it can be over time. And then this is your job use log. For, so it tells you for the job how much you've used, and then it tells you um, totals. And then from, if we hit the, the lock button, we change the screen and we go to the setup screen. So here we're going to go to system configuration. We're going to enter. When we set your machine up, we would go through all this. And this is all we can pass for protective, so it can't be changed by the operator. Uh, we can go through and tell it what what language you want to use, so forth, uh, set the date, time, how many guns the system is going to use, if we have gun flush boxes, if we don't have gun flush boxes, all the parameters for the machine to know what it's doing. We can tell if it's a 1K machine, a 2K machine, or a 3K machine. And then if we go back to, we go into the recipe and advanced system, this is where we tell it the recipes that we're going to be using. So uh, recipes are the advanced functions, online volume, which is how much materials in the hose. You can tell the ratio of tolerance, how much we let it vary one way before we alarm the machine. Um, and that's the recipe screen you're seeing here now. That's a little louder into the... Oh, got it. Okay, that's right. We don't have the mic over here. We normally do. Yeah. So this is the recipe screen. I think Mike is going to cover that for you a little bit. Yeah. So basically what you're looking at is the recipe screen. Um, and uh, you, can con you can configure up to 60 different recipes on this. Uh, and a lot of people will ask me, well, why 60 if you only have 30 colors? Uh, there's some people that like to program different ratios depending on different weather conditions, warm weather, cold weather. So it might be the same material, but you can simply select a different recipe number here and simply change what the ratio is. This one's set uh, at a 2 to 1. I have a 5% tolerance programmed on this. Uh, this system is going to operate at 1% or greater. Uh, however, you can, most materials are forgiving out to 5%, so typically we see people put 5% just to not get those um, nuisance, alarms. nuisance alarms. Exactly right. This one has color change, um, so we've gone through and we've told it which valve to activate for that recipe. Okay? Um, on the recipe, you'll notice over here on the right, it says 1 of 6. Basically what that means is within the recipe, there's six screens that I can move through to customize that recipe. And we're not going to go real deep into it, but basically by hitting my down button, I can just move through all those fields. The benefit here is we're moving through purging sequence. So by recipe, I can select how I want to purge. So if I have a really difficult material that flushes not real nicely, I can be a, a real aggressive purge sequence. All right. Now, the really nice feature of the 2KS is if I've got three or four materials and they all behave the same, I can set it to be global, set one purge sequence, and assign that sequence to all recipes. So we have some flexibility in how we program these recipes as well. Okay? All right. Um, the last thing I want to show is a calibration screen. And basically what a calibration screen does is that allows us to do a manual dispense and what that means is, is the system tracks how much material was manually dispensed, and we put it in a graduated cylinder or a beaker, and we compare it to what the unit thinks it does, has dispensed, and we can make sure that the meter is actually working properly. Okay? All right, so I think with that, that was a, just a, a real quick uh, a walkthrough of some of the programming. We're going to go back to the main screen. I'm going to connect air to this system, and I think, Bill, we're just going to have us uh, walk through a load and a color change. Okay? Okay. So once you've told the uh, machine what the recipe is, the operator just walks over and he'll like pick recipe one by scrolling up or down, and then just hit the enter button. Oh, we can hear it here in just a second, but it should be. The little light here is flashing, as you can see. Uh, you can't see the yeah, on the display you'll see it, it says recipe change to one. There you go. So because it's in the gun flush box, the, the gun flush box is triggering the, the gun at the appropriate time. It's turned the, the uh, atomizing there off so we don't get uh, solvent 
ionization alarm. And you can see as it goes through the sequence, it tells you which valve is on and open and closed and what the unit is doing. And so what it's doing here is it's going through a sequence of filling based on what you've told it the fill volume is. Right. So it's tracking during the fill, and if you've told it that the system holds 300 cc's of mixed material, it's tracking until it sees 300 cc's, and then it knows that the sequence is done. But once it's done, once it's gone through that whole sequence that's in the recipe, it goes into standby. Now the operator's ready to go. He takes the gun out of the gun flesh box, and he would just hit the spray uh, icon on the uh, booth control, and he's ready to go. So if you want to change colors, what he has to do is he has to hit What we'd like to do before you do that, Bill, is Eric, can we back out on the camera so everybody can see the actual uh, uh, physical movement that Bill's making to do this? That's good right there, probably. That's fine. Okay, so the roof control now is in spray mode, or it's in standby. If you were in spray mode, you would hit the standby button. And that would stop the flow of material. And it's waiting, the machine is now waiting for you to give it a direction. So then we would go to the next color, say color two, and you would hit the enter button. What the machine does now, what the 2KS does now, is it goes through that flush sequence we programmed in to the machine um, using the easy key. And then it will reload the amount that we told is the, is the volume it needs to do to fill the system. And again, the benefit here with the gun flush box is. The gun's in the gun flush box and it's automatically being triggered. Yes. So your, your operator can actually now be moving material out or in the booth, checking the masking, getting ready, material ready yep. to spray. And now it's still going through the recipe change, it tells you. So it's now filling. It, it tells you what's on the screen what the through the whole process, what it's doing. It's just not doing the mix fill. Mix fill error. So mix fill error, meaning so what happens uh, on this, and we programmed that in on purpose, um, your fill and your, your time, your, your fill volume and your fill time have to work with each other. In other words, if you don't program enough time for that required volume, right, then you get this alarm. And what that does is that stops the operator from being able to go out and start painting when he doesn't have mixed material out to the gun yet. So that's a safety built into the system to make sure that um, you have paint to the gun for the operator to close out. Correct. Correct. It's too thick. It doesn't move fast enough yep. like it did. I mean, there's yep. several reasons why you can get better. So to clear that, clear button. Now it's in standby. Okay. The end of the day, you go to recipe zero. Zero and it hit the air button and it goes through the last, it goes through the flush sequence and doesn't reload any material from, from the stack through the gear here. Real simple. Very intuitive, very easy for the operator to use. Once they get used to it in a day or two, it's, it's become second nature to them. Okay. Uh, want to take a question? Sure. Okay, question is it's going back to the ratio check. So they say, how do you uh, dispense the verify ratio against what the machine is saying? Is there a value open to dispense? Right. So if you, if you can scan down just a little bit. On the bottom down here, there's two valves. We close those valves. That guarantees that the material that we're going to measure is coming only from the metering valve here. So we're using a graduated cylinder. You would put it into the calibration mode. You would slowly open this. You pick the, the side you want to, you're going to do the resin side, you pick the A side, you put it in the mode, you open this slowly, you dispense two or three hundred cc's into your graduated cylinder, you turn this off, and you look at the screen, and uh, let's see if I can do that. So then, it, it says, all right, I dispense 300 cc's, and you look at your graduated cylinder, and it says 250. You would enter 250 into that screen, and the machine then makes the allowance and the appropriate adjustments. You do that for both the A and B sides. If you have different materials of different viscosities, you should calibrate each, each color. And the machine then will remember what the 
settings are for each independent color. Okay. okay. And then when you go back and you just be sure these, you do a flush, you flush these out, and then you close these and you open these bottom valves again so we have flow going out to the gun instead of just out to the metering valves. Okay. Yeah, I think that's good. All right. Another question. And the question is, is the flow metering on the 2KS system different than the PD2K system? Can both of these systems, the two parts, the second part of the question is, can both of these systems be used on robotic applications? So you want to take the first part about the flow metering on the 2KS versus PD2K? Yes. The 2KS is a meter-based system. The PD2K is a positive displacement system. We're actually measuring the amount of material flow using positive displacement in a series of stepper motors so we know how much that material has moved. On the 2KS, we're using meters so we know every time a gear gets or counted, we know how much material has gone through that meter. Good. Okay. The second part was can both of those systems be used on robotic? They yeah. can both be used on robotic systems. Um, there again, like Mike was talking about earlier. We can tell, we can control this from a PLC. We can control the PD2K from the PLC. Uh, we can have add-on modules. We can do pressure control. We can do uh, flow control with this unit. On the PD2K, it's part of the system. It's already built in. Uh, so yes, they can both be fully integrated with a, with, a, with a computer or a robot and a PLC. Maybe we should do a PD2K webinar sometime in the future. I think we'll be doing that very, very soon. Okay. Okay, another question. How easy or difficult is it to move from a manual wall mount system to an automated wall mount system? For example, if you're starting with a manual but want to go to robotic painting in the future, can we do that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's just a, it's, a, it's an easy add-on. Uh, you just upgrade to your board and upgrade your software. There you go. It's just an upgrade for the board, Mike says, and, and uh, the software. Okay, cool. Can be done in the field. Yes. Done in the field. All right. So. Another question is for uh, a Promix 3KS, what is the sequence of mixing by components? Like, I guess which, which, what components go first? And okay, it depends on the, on the coating you're using, what the coating manufacturer is telling you to do. Uh, most applications are we mix the A and B component, then we add a reducer to that. So it's A and B together going over to the third component, we add that to reduce viscosity. In some cases, they'll want to reduce the resin component and then add the catalyst. We can do that. We can just add the catalyst as the third component instead of the second component. It becomes a C instead of the B. So we can do the same thing with the catalyst. You can reduce the catalyst if you have to. So it all depends on what your, uh, what your coating supplier is recommending you do. But it's very adaptable. Okay, cool. Just to remind anybody that does have a question, Type it into the, either the Q&A pod or the chat pod, and I'll read it out to the panel here. So another question is, why is a single color system rated for 4,000 PSI and the color change system rated for 3,000 and 300 PSI? Why the difference? It has to do with the valve stack. Okay, so the, the, uh, the gear meter itself on a single component unit, we would come from the pump of the fluid regulator directly into here, into your gear oh. meter, and they're rated for 3,000 PSI. Get down to where you are here. There you go. And they're rated, that's perfect. They're rated for 3,000 PSI. When we're using the uh, the color stack, depending on which valve system we have, this happens to be a low pressure color stack, so that's 300 PSI. That's the limiting factor. The valves on your on your fluid panel are all 3,000 PSI valves. The high pressure valves for your color stack are 3,000 PSI. So the limiting factor is, is the valving itself. The flow meter can take. PSI. Okay. All right. Uh, here's a question on the Coriolis meter. Why would I use a Coriolis meter? If you have a really thin material or you have a material that has fibers or metallics or something like that, then we need something that, that can go through the, the, uh, the gear meter accurately. And if you have fibers or metallics, of course, it can't go through here because it will gum up the work, so to speak. We use a Coriolis meter, so it's just basically a, a just a straight shot through it and it picks up the vibration, the frequency of the vibration of the material going through it, and very accurately accounts for the material going through. All right. I think we're down to one last question, unless somebody can type one in quickly here. But the last question is, 
why would I use any, this is going under the dose size, the 50 cc, why would I use anything other than a 50 cc dose volume? So, good question. It would depend on your, uh, on your flow rate and your ratio. So if you have a really wide ratio, like 50 to 1, and we have, we have a, a large integrator, we can't move, or a small integrator, we can't move the valving open and close fast enough to keep up with it. So we increase the size of the integrator so we can have the valve open longer. Uh, we could mix and match the disintegrator depending on what your flow rate requirements are in the, uh, in, in the ratio. I'd like to add to that that obviously the, the reason you might want to go to a smaller integrator would be to reduce the size of paint in the system for operations yep. where there's a lot of color changes. Yep. And what, what you're talking about, Bill, is there are some limitations to ratio versus flow rate. Right. Yeah. All right. I am not seeing any more questions. Just want to make sure I'm not missing something here. Other than that, I think that, uh, that's it for questions. So, all right. So, we got to wrap up here. Where do they go for further information? Okay. So, thanks for joining us today. If you need any further information, you can call our office at 425-743-9999. Uh, We're in, located in Everett, Washington, or you can email us at the uh, Email address on the screen: marketing at finishingconsultants.com. We'll get uh, we'll get the appropriate person to get back to you with the information, help you build an ROI to see which machine works best for you in your application. Okay, I think that's it. What about uh, what's our next webinar? We'll be doing the next webinar on the PD2K that we talked about. It will be in September. The actual date we will send out. Shortly. Okay, so next webinar, PD2K, December. Watch your email for a minute. Yep, we will email that out. Okay, I think that's it. That's it for questions. Thank you, everybody, for joining. We'll have a, uh, a recording done for this webinar. We'll send that on. Send the link up for that. Yep. So, thanks a lot for everybody who joined in, and thanks for your participation. Thanks for your questions. And we look forward to. See you again in an upcoming webinar. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Bye.